Hello again and welcome back to my shop. A couple of weeks ago, I posted a video on preparing deer antler uh, to make into turning blanks for pens. One of the questions I received on that video was from a gentleman named Friedrich uh, from Sweden. Now, Friedrich and I have uh, communicated back and forth via email several times, and uh, he's, he's become, become a friend of mine. Uh, sent me some wood from Sweden that I will be using in some future projects. I'd like to say thank you for that, Friedrich. I definitely appreciate it. Um, but the question Friedrich asked, he said that he had some elk antler. The problem was it was porous, and he asked, you know, is there anything he could do to use this porous antler? So today, what I would like to do in this video is basically show you what I do when I get a piece of deer antler that's really porous. So I put together a blank uh, purposefully from the larger section, the bottom section of an antler, so that it had plenty of pores in it. So this video will show you how I take care of turning a porous blank into a usable blank and the pores actually add quite a bit of character to the finished product. This particular blank is extremely porous. You can see all of the holes in the blank. The first thing that I did with this blank, now my lathe is not reverse, so I took the blank off of the lathe or off the mandrel and flipped it around so that it would be spinning now in the opposite direction from which it was turned. I'm gonna sand this blank through 400 grit but what I'm going to do is after I sand with a 100 grit, I'm going to flip the blank over. Sand with 200, flip it over. Sand with 300, flip it over. Sand with 400. That way I'm sanding in both directions as I switch between the grits. That's going to help me more evenly take down um, some of the rough spots on the blank where it's very porous. With my lathe set to the lowest possible speed setting, I'm ready to start sanding. This blank is considerably smoother than it was when I started turning. By flipping this blank over as I sand it, what happens is you don't find, I'm going to use the term grain. Grain is the wrong term, but if you were sanding wood, it, it might lay the grain down in one direction. By flipping it over, that grain would then be facing the opposite direction, and when I sand it with the paper going in the opposite direction, it gives me a much smoother surface to work with. I still have a lot of pores in the material. What I'm going to do now is grab my CA glue and grab my nonstick bushings and we're going to fill those pores. Normally when I use CA glue, I'll apply it to a small pad and then apply the pad to the blank. What I'm going to do with porous material, and this works on wood as well, is I like to apply the CA glue to the blank with the pad under it smoothing it out. I'm still running at the slowest speed of my lathe. And I'm just going to basically be very, there we go, a nice heavy coat of CA glue. 
I'm going to give that CA glue a couple of minutes to dry. Feels pretty good. And I'm going to apply a second coat. Now what I like to do is switch the lathe off and I like to kind of take a quick peek and see how it's going. And I can see that the pores, they're still there, but they're nowhere near as deep. The CA glue has started to fill them in and sort of level them up a little bit. So I want to go ahead and continue on. I'm going to put one more coat on nice and heavy. I'm going to let the lathe continue to spin until that coat dries. And then we're going to use some polishing pads to polish the blank up before we apply any additional coats of CA. I let my blank spin for about 30 seconds and it's nice and dry. It's not even tacky to the touch. What I like to do is the same principle that I used while sanding. I'm going to go ahead and flip this blank over before I polish it. That way anything that I've laid down will be facing this direction and the, the, the sanding pads will be able to smooth it much easier. I've been using these new sanding pads. They're a two-sided pad and they go from 600 grit to 12,000 grit. I really like them because they're, they're, they're simple to use, they're convenient, they're color coded so you know which which color to use first, which to use second, and that allows you to use the grits in the proper order. You do lightly dampen them before you use them. So I've got a cup of water here just sitting down below my lathe, and I'm just going to dip these and polish my blanks. You do not want to put a lot of pressure. Light pressure and just rub back and forth on the blank. Once you've rubbed for a few seconds, you want to take a clean cloth and you want to take the slurry off of the blank. Flip the blank over and repeat with the opposite side. I don't feel any rough areas at all. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and I won't need to flip the blank anymore because even going backwards there are no rough spots. What I'm going to do now is continue on applying my coats of CA glue. I'm going to do nine coats total. Um, when I'm done with the nine coats I'll take a close look at the blank under light to see just how it looks. Since I've got my first couple of coats on heavy, I'm going to go back to my normal method of applying my CA glue to a pad of paper towel. I won't make you sit and watch this process, but essentially what I'm going to do is two more coats. I'm going to sand it with my polishing pads, then I'll take three more coats, sand it again with my polishing pads, and then we'll buff it. I'll come back at the buffing stage and uh, pick up there. I went ahead and applied my CA glue and sanded it two additional times. I haven't polished yet. I do want to let you know that right before I applied the last coat of CA glue, I looked closely at the blank and there were still a few pock marks on the blank. So I went ahead and uh, used a thick coat of the glue by applying the glue to the blank with the towel under it. And it seems to have done a really nice job. It feels like a piece of glass. So I'm ready now to go ahead and get my polish and polish this blank to a nice shine. I'm just using a little one-step polish. This is normally for acrylic blanks, but it works really well when you put the CA glue finish uh, on a pen, whether it be wood or antler. This is just a clean paper towel, and I'm just gonna kind of buff that one step polish off. Kind of like waxing a car. You put the wax on, let it dry a little bit, and then you buff it off. Um, I like to do two coats of the one step. There's nothing in the instructions that tells you you need to do that, but I always get super results and uh, it works for me, so I'm going to go ahead and apply a second coat. 
I simply hold the polish on there until I can feel the heat in my finger and I know that I'm uh, getting the polish on good. Now what I want to do is buff it off one additional time. All right, let's get our blank off the mantle and see how it looks. Trying to get my camera to focus, you can see as I kind of tilt the blank, you can see that the blank is as smooth as glass. It looks gorgeous, and now the marrow marks actually give an awful lot of character to the blank. Let's go ahead and assemble this pen and see what it looks like. I've got all the parts to my pen laid out on the lathe. I'm going to go ahead and grab the nib, the front part of the pen, and I'm going to insert the blank. I'm going to give just a little bit of a touch. I don't like to push against my wood or my bone blanks. Um, with the metal end and the nib needs to go into this HDPE end up here to protect it so I use a small piece of corrugated cardboard as a buffer and I'll just press the pin together okay that worked out very nicely and it's really a nice transition right here you don't feel any lip uh, from the blank or from the the nib of the pin now let's go ahead and press the back side in I need to adjust my There we go. A little bit further. All right. Let's go ahead and press the back side in. I like to kind of look at my blank and find an area that doesn't have a lot of character, and that's where I like the clip to go because I want as much character to show in the pin as possible. Once again, I'm going to bump the pin just to get it started, and then I'm going to grab the piece of cardboard, put it behind the pin. And we're going to press the back end of the pin in. Oh, that's a real nice transition too. There's no lip there. Last thing to do is to unscrew the nib. We get our ink. Pull the cap off. Drop the ink into the pin. Drop the spring onto the ink refill. Grab my nib. and screw it back on and we have got a gorgeous pen this thing is absolutely beautiful now what I want to do is make a quick comment I want everyone to know that I'm going to be giving this pen away in a little contest it's going to be super simple anyone and everyone can join so stay tuned for a video that will be coming out shortly after this one that will tell you how you can win this Deer Antler Bolt Action Bullet Pin. I hope this video is beneficial to you, uh, and I hope that in the future, if you do decide to turn a pin from antler, that you don't get discouraged when you cut the antler open and turn it down and, and end up having a bunch of pores. It really is easy to take care of. Well, I hope that you were able to uh, have some takeaways from the video. It's extremely easy to fill the holes in. CA glue is absolutely wonderful. Um, I probably could have gone with a thicker glue than I used. Uh, I just didn't have any in the shop at this time. Uh, that would have probably filled the pores quicker, but the thin did just fine and I'm happy with the results. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Here's the pen that I made. Let me get it a little closer to the camera here. There's the bolt action. It's got a nice rifle clip on it. It's absolutely beautiful. And you can see that the pores did add a lot of character to the pen. Now, as I said in the video, I am going to be giving this pen away. So stay tuned for a, a, another video that will explain, if you're interested in this pen, what you can do to have a chance at winning it. I hope you liked everything that you saw. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Better yet, leave me a comment. Comments are great. I love interacting with everyone. I try to answer all comments. Um, that is the way that I do get ideas for future videos. This video here came from a comment. 
Um, if you're not a subscriber, I would like to invite you to subscribe right now. And you're always welcome in my shop. Have a great day.